Hey, 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 what's up everybody? It is Uncle Mad here with another in our most popular series, Marvel Monday. That's right, we're back. Marvel Monday, back in the fold. Everybody's favorite, they keep requesting it. Bring back, do more Marvel Mondays. You wanted it, you got it. Here's what we got for Marvel Monday this week. Over the weekend, I finally got around to watching Black Panther Wakanda Forever. And originally I was gonna do just like a video about that movie specifically, but then I looked through some stuff. I was doing some research on the Marvel movies and I realized without something I didn't just completely overlooked, Black Panther Wakanda Forever was the final movie in phase four of the Marvel Cinematic Universe, so I thought rather than just do a Black Panther review, why don't we go through and do just a full-on updated ranking through the end of Phase 4. So none of the most recent movies, I think it's just like uh, Guardians 3, Ant-Man and the Wasp, Quantumania, I think they're the first two of Phase 5, so everything through Black Panther movie-wise, I decided to go through and rank. So I figured to share those rankings, share my thoughts on those. Quick little burbs, quick, quick little hits on each of those today. Um, I will start out talking just a little bit about Black Panther. We'll get to it on the countdown eventually. But uh, very, it's hard. It's a hard movie to really recap and you know review because it was clearly so heavily impacted by the things that you know went down in the real world with the tragic uh, passing of Chadwick Boseman, who portrayed T'Challa, the Black Panther. Uh, you know, obviously that had to have thrown a loop into what the plans were for the movie, what the movie's tone and, you know, demeanor were going to be. So it's it's got to be hard to make that movie when your main character, your main actor, your kind of anchor of your franchise passes away in real life. Because, you, you know, when you make the decision to not recast the character, to actually have the character also pass away... That clearly throws a wrench into things, and you kind of it kind of brings the movie down because the movie just has like a natural kind of sadness to it, just from that real life occurrence. So um, it's there, it's hanging over the movie, and it, it kind of hurts the movie to be honest. It, it, but like I said, it's hard to criticize the movie for that because it kind of had to be part of the process. But it loses what was a lot of the fun, a lot of the spirit, a lot of the kind of joy of the original Black Panther. You know, Shuri in this one kind of steps in as the main character, and she was such a fun almost comic relief character and just kind of the way she would tease T'Challa and was kind of like, you know, messing with him about his shoes and stuff in the first movie and she's just, you know, going through it in this one. She's in a complete state of depression, of sadness. Um, spoiler alerts, obviously, because we're going to get into spoilers. I did Spoiler, 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 spoiler alerts for everything. I might spoil any and all of the movies on the list here and we're going to start with, you know, there's going to be spoilers here for Black Panther Wakanda Forever. I think it was a bizarre choice with already having the passing of Chadwick Boseman in real life, the decision to make the character T'Challa die in the movie, to then also kill off Queen Ramonda, Angela Bissett's character in the movie. So you already have like this real life tragedy, you already have the tragedy within the movie. Did you really need to throw in like an extra tragic moment? Like, and I feel like that's been kind of a problem post Endgame Avengers, is they're just like, leaning heavy, heavily into trauma and tragedy and sad things and it's like the fun and bounciness that really started to catch fire with the first Guardians movie. I actually went back and I watched Guardians 1 and 2. I watched uh, two Captain America movies and I'm like, and I watched Thor Ragnarok over the weekend as well and I'm like, Marvel seems to have lost like the funny side of things. Like they, they like, it was really Guardians that kind of like set the tone for what Marvel started doing in the movies, making them a little bit more comedic, a little bit more fun. Even, I mean, the original Iron Man had that to an extent, but I think they've gotten away from that too much. They've just gone so dour, so tragic, so sad all the time. Need to get the fun back into it. Even like Thor Ragnarok, which was too comedic at times. It was like they kind of let uh, Tahika Watiti off the hook a little bit too much. I'll talk about more of that when we get to it in the countdown, but even it has like the cancer subplot with Jane Foster. So like all the movies post Endgame have just been like, Steering too much in the trauma, too much in the tragedy. Obviously, this one was going to have that there because of the real life passing of Chadwick Boseman, but I thought it was just unnecessarily steering into even more tragedy to then also kill off uh, Angela Bassett's character. I, it was good, it was entertaining, everybody's performing well, especially under the circumstances, but I just, it was just too dour, too sour, and it was honestly kind of boring. Like, the first hour and a half was a slug to get through. Like, the last. 40 minutes or so once they start to kick off and really start getting into it with Namor it was pretty good but the first hour hour and a half is just like so slow and boring yeah not, not great for me this one I like the I thought that portrayal of 
Namor was interesting. Because, you know, the character is traditionally this complete a-hole, cocky douchebag. And they kept the cockiness, but they made him more of like a subtle ego than more of like the over-the-top, you know, just brash, bold, douchebag Namor character. So I kind of liked the portrayal of Namor. I kind of wish we'd gotten more from him. I didn't fully understand his motivations throughout the movie. Like, so the plot of the movie is basically uh, Americans and other countries are trying to find other sources of vibranium since they can't get the vibranium from Wakanda. It cut, turns out there's this undersea kingdom that this Namor guy, who's basically like the Aquaman of Marvel Universe, leads. And they also have vibranium. And some scientist in America made a detector that can find vibranium. And so he decides he wants to kill the scientist. And he thinks it's Wakanda's responsibility to do so because they've put the target on all the vibranium or something. I don't know. I didn't fully understand his motivation or what his plot or what his, he really wanted to have happen. I didn't know why he was like, you have to kill the scientist because I was like, well, the, the vibranium detector's already been invented. What, do, what good does it do to kill the scientist at this point in time? And then why he was blaming Wakanda for all of it, I didn't fully understand. So there was, once again, I'm sure a lot of this was thrown into the, you know, blender when Chadwick Boseman passed away. Like I would assume Queen Ramonda initial plans, they're probably going to kill her originally. That was probably going to be the tragic kind of, you know, gut punch of the movie and maybe you should have thrown that out once Chadwick Boseman died but they kept that in I think so I think that was a lingering from the previous there's probably some stuff with Namor that got kind of mixed up and had to be changed up because of the other changes of the movie but overall you know I, I didn't enjoy it that much it was kind of a letdown from after the first Black Panther was so good um but it felt like it was kind of resetting the table for the Black Panther universe more than anything, like, to set up for future. Because, like, they basically set up Namor and the conflict to continue. And, obviously, Shuri becomes the new Black Panther. So it was a lot of setup for what the future of that franchise is probably going to be. But the biggest problem for me was it was just kind of boring, especially for, like, the first hour and a half. Hour and a half. That's all I'm going to say about Black Panther Wakanda Forever. Uh, let's jump into the rankings. Quick, couple quick thoughts. I didn't put the TV shows in the rankings because... They've been kind of weird. Like, there's a lot of good stuff in the TV shows, but they probably shouldn't be long TV shows. Like, I saw, the podcast I was listening to was talking about MCU was saying, if instead of doing, like, the eight to ten episode TV shows, if they were doing, you know, one to three episode miniseries or 45 to an hour specials, kind of like the Guardians holiday special, a lot of these shows would have been a lot better because like there's a good idea at the heart of most of the shows, but it feels like they had to stretch it too much to make a TV show length. Um, I think a big part of that was that was probably a Disney decision because Disney needed content for the launch of Disney+. Plus. They've got it populated now, so hopefully with the kind of second wave of TV shows that are coming, we've got Secret Evasion coming out in June. Hopefully they made some adjustments, kind of figured some things out to maybe just say, hey, we've got enough content we've got the thing under our belts so let's maybe focus more on making sure the content we're putting out now is like quality that we're not stretching things just for the sake of stretching them uh which they kind of did with some of the tv shows like captain american winter soldier could have been a really solid hour and a half movie but they probably didn't think those characters could carry their own movie so they made a tv show and stretched it out to like a six seven eight hour thing wandavision probably could have done with being only like four episodes as opposed to however many it was Hawkeye held up pretty well. I thought that was one of the better ones uh, overall. Loki was probably the best one for sure. Um, but yeah, I think they should definitely like shorten the series if they want to keep doing TV shows or even just do like standalone one-off specials, more like the Guardians holiday special. And I've heard good things about the uh, Werewolf by Midnight one, but I haven't watched that one yet. One final thing. With the rewatching stuff I was doing recently, the biggest takeaway I had from all that was like casting Chris Evans as Captain America. You know, Downey Jr., that gets all the attention. That's the biggest thing. But casting Chris Evans might have been like the biggest home run that hit because he's awesome as Captain America. And if you think back to where he was prior to Captain America, he was kind of like dead the water. He wasn't thought of that well in Hollywood. He'd done the two terrible Fantastic Four movies. I think people thought he was more of just like a one of those kind of just handsome guys that's not necessarily like good at acting or anything like that. And Captain America really like lit a fire under him, showed his brain, showed his quality as an actor, as a performer. Now, like, there's the whole War of the Chris's. He's doing all this fun stuff like Knives Out and all that great stuff that he's done since Captain America. So I did want to shout that out and say that might have been secretly one of the better casting things Marvel did. You know, Downey Jr. gets all the attention, rightfully so. But Chris Evans as Captain America kind of knocked out of the park. You know, you look back at the time of who was up for the role at the time. Like, John Krasinski was one of the main people that was also up for Captain America. And I think that probably wouldn't have been... It might have been fine. He's a good actor. He's better enough, but I don't think it would have been anywhere near as good as it was with Chris Evans. So 
Shout out Marvel for that. All right, so here's what we're going to do now. Getting into the rankings. I'm going to give you, starting at the bottom, I did a bubble sort. If you watched my Pixar ranking videos from a while back, basically the way a bubble sort works is started at the very first movie that released, Iron Man. Went to Incredible Hulk, and I said, is Iron Man or Incredible Hulk better? Spoiler alert, I said Iron Man was better. So Iron Man stayed at one, slid in Hulk at two, came back with Iron Man two, so forth, so forth. Just if it was it better than the ones in front of it, moved it up till it wasn't. That's how we got our ranking. So I'll give a quick blurb. I'm going to try to keep this as short and condensed as I can about each one, kind of why I put it where it is, what I liked and didn't like about it. I'm not doing full-blown reviews. I basically have done every movie, me and FUP, back in the original incarnation of um, Marvel Monday, went all the way through like in-game. So go back and watch those if you want more detailed thoughts on our stuff on those. But there will be a few new ones in here because there's been a few new movies that have come out since the original run of Marvel Mondays ended. But here we go, starting with number 32, the Eternals. This movie sucks. It is so bad. I talked about how boring Black Panther was. Imagine how boring Black Panther Wakanda Forever was times infinity. Like, and the concept of this movie is so cool is that it was like this secret society that goes from planet to planet and helps facilitate the development and the creation of the planets, but kind of watches from afar. But they just made it so boring. They made the characters just not interesting. You got somebody as funny as Camille Nanjani in there, and you basically like don't give him much to work with. Kind of a waste of Richard Madden and Kit Harrington, who could potentially be big new stars for the MCU. But I mean, this movie just sucked. It's so boring, so just bleh, just not good. Like they put like the best, one of the better cast together that they've had for a Marvel movie, and just didn't do it. And I think you know, Chloe Zhao directed this. She won the Oscar for like Nomad Land or whatever that was movie was called and I think sometimes a lot of times you're going for like a good you, great great filmmaker but not a good fit for the Marvel Cinematic Universe wanted to do too much and I think it's clear that Marvel realized this movie you know didn't hit and this is another kind of thing that sort of is a problem with the post Endgame MCU is it's kind of become disconnected again after being super connected in Infinity War and Endgame it's kind of they've moved apart like Eternals ends with the revelation that there's like a, I can't remember if it's a celestial, what one of the godlike figures in the Marvel universe is embedded within the earth and it's like starting to rise out of the Indian Ocean. It's this giant figure rising out of the Indian Ocean, but the Eternals manage to stop it and freeze it, and but there's still like a giant god hand sticking out of the Indian Ocean. And that just never comes up. That's never mentioned in any of the other Marvel movies since then. It's just completely forgotten that these Eternals, this like new superhero team showed up. It's just like, everybody forgets about it. That was another problem with Black Panther Wakanda Forever. None of the Avengers came to Black Panther's funeral. Like, you couldn't have like CGI'd something together or like had them go to different spots, kind of like Tony Stark funeral or like clearly all those people weren't there at the same time. They just filmed them at different times and then kind of mashed them together. Like, just none of the Avengers showed up for Black Panther's funeral. I don't know. Maybe because it was like more of a ceremonial, like, you know, Wakandan thing. It wasn't the place for them to be at. I don't know. Felt weird to me. But it feels weird that this movie happened because this movie was like, had some big, like, kind of earth-shaking things in it and it just has not been acknowledged outside of the Eternals. So I talked too much about the Eternals already. Terrible. Thor the Dark World. This is all you need to know about Thor the Dark World. In the original run of Marvel Monday, where me and Nephew P went back and rewatched every single Marvel movie, we skipped Thor the Far World. I even call it by the wrong name right there. We skipped Thor the Dark World. We renamed it Thor the Fart World because I just, it sucks and I did not want to rewatch it. I didn't want to sit through two hours of that. So we literally just hung out in the pool and watched like a baseball game instead of watching Thor the Dark World. And then we called it Thor the Fart World and acted like we watched it and just made up a bunch of stuff about it. It's terrible, it's boring, it's before they figured out really what to do with Thor. It sucks. 30, The Incredible Hulk. Now, I do think there's a world where Ed Norton could have potentially been a better Hulk than Mark Ruffalo. I, I, I like Mar Mark Ruffalo, I like some of his stuff, but I, I thought Ed Norton was a really good Bruce Banner and Mark Ruffalo was just, he seemed like, more like he was just being Mark Ruffalo. It didn't really ever feel like he was actually Bruce Banner, so. I would like to see alternate dimension, Ed Norton goes all the way through and his Bruce Banner all the way through all the movies, what would happen there. But this movie itself is not very good. Um, the, abom the CGI with the abomination at the end, he looks terrible. Like the Hulk looks pretty good in this movie, but the abomination looks terrible. Eh, it's at 30. 29, I've got Black Widow. I think this movie would have worked better if it came out 
chronologically in the timeline of when it was happened. So if you, you're not familiar with this exactly, Black Widow essentially was a flashback prequel movie. It came out after Black Widow had died in Avengers Endgame. And it was set between the events of Captain America Civil War and Avengers Infinity War. So you kind of already knew Black Widow's long-term fade. It was kind of like, felt more like a gesture just to give Scarlett Johansson the solo movie she deserved. But if it had come out after Civil War, before you knew that she was eventually going to die and everything, I think it would have been a lot better. But also the villains in this movie kind of suck. Like they kind of ruined Taskmaster, who's a really cool villain in the comics because he can mimic and just do anything that any hero can do. So he's almost like limitless in his power because he can just copy other people's powers and stuff. And then the Russian, like Ray Winstone, whatever he was doing, just kind of sucked too. So the villain sucked. Kind of felt a little disjointed because it came out of time. But I really liked David Harbour's character. I liked... Uh, Rachel Weiss's character. I like Scarlett Johansson in the movie. I like the introduction of, um, what's her name? Helena, the, the new black, essentially the new black widow. I liked a lot of the stuff in it, but just like the timeline kind of messed it up and the villain sucking kind of messed it up. 28, I've got Iron Man 3. I'm not as negative on the sort of twist and turn of using the different version of the man, uh, the Mandarin as some people were. I thought that was kind of a cool twist, a kind of a cool idea, but then it just goes off the rails. It feels like they just kind of lost track of what they're trying to do in like the third act of the movie, and then just, everybody turns into like these fire monster supervillains weirdly, and then it ends with Tony Stark being like, "I'm not going to be Iron Man anymore," and blowing all his suits up, and then he's back like a movie later as Iron Man. So that was like, why put that kind of tag on the end of him deciding to destroy all his suits and give up being Iron Man when you're 100% sure you know he's coming back and he's still going to keep being Iron Man through like a bunch of more Avengers movies and stuff like that. It's at 28. 27, I've got Ant-Man and the Wasp. This is another one where like it was pretty good. I, li I like all the characters. I like the humor in it, but I didn't think the villains were as good as this one is in the first one, and it just kind of took it down a little bit. Like I didn't really understand anybody's motivations in it. Like It was one where it was like, why is... I don't know. It was a weird one. It was weird. I just the villain... Most of the ones that I don't like are the ones where the villains weren't so good. 26, Iron Man 2. I would have liked to have gotten more of Mickey Rourke's villain in this. I thought his whiplash was cool. I liked how they just let Mickey Rourke be Mickey Rourke. Like, he's like, I want to have a parrot in this movie. Okay, you can have a parrot. I want to have my weird dreadlocks in this movie. Okay, you can have your weird dreadlocks. Should have steered into that more. Should have steered more into the... Uh, I liked... Uh, what's his name? Sam Rockwell's character, too. Like, it's kind of like the lesser knockoff Tony Stark type character. I thought he was a cool character. The sort of mid, like movie plot of him having to re-kind of do the arc reactor to save himself, kind of drag the movie down and kind of took it out of the flow that it had going. I also thought like they kind of sort of teased that they wanted to do Demon in a Bottle but wouldn't fully steer into it. So it felt like there was just like too much going on and they should have steered into some of the stuff that was working better like Rockwell and Mickey Rourke's villains. 25, I've got Shang-Chi. I like this pretty good but I think it was hurt by COVID because like I thought the CGI and it was terrible. I thought it looked very very bad but like i like the actors like the characters but it's another one where it's kind of hurt by the fact that marvel is like weirdly disconnected because it ended on this teaser that there were some weird signals being sent out that the 10 rings were detecting and that movie came out like three four years ago now we haven't heard any follow-up any continuation of that we don't know when shang chi is next showing up they've said there's going to be a sequel to shang chi but it's not on the schedule anywhere so it seems like he probably isn't showing up till the avengers movies that are coming out in like 2025 so we've got this hanging plot point of what are these weird signals from space it, I, I don't know yeah i think it, it was hurt by just being in it coming out at a time where like covid was messing some stuff up with the schedules probably messing up their ability to shoot the movie the way they wanted to shoot the movie and also they really maybe were changing ideas about what they wanted to do with the kind of wave of marvel that was coming there 24 black panther wakanda forever i talked about that 23 avengers age of ultron I think this is sneaky better than people think it is. I think there's going to come a point in time where people will maybe start to say that Avengers Age of Ultron is actually better than the first Avengers movie. I think there's a case to be made for that. I'm not making that case here because when I went through, did the bubble sort, I still had it at 23. I still had it where it's at. It is what it is. So be it. 22, I've got Ant-Man. The original Ant-Man, Paul Rudd, really good. Fit really well in the character role. Yellow Jacket's a decent villain. Uh, it's just kind of like overall not that great of a movie like it just wasn't as good as it, it was fine But it wasn't as good as the other stuff like that. I have ahead of it 21 Captain Marvel liked it a lot Once again, it's not that it's a bad movie like we're getting to where like I like all these movies now like the first kind of 
10 or so there kind of sucked, but now we're getting movies that I actually like, but they're just not as good as some of the other ones. So I think that's part of the same thing as Captain Marvel, where it was good, maybe not as good as some of the stuff that's ahead of it. 20, I've got the first Doctor Strange movie. Been at cover batch, really good. I really like him. He's been solid addition to the MCU. 19, I've got the original Thor. I thought this movie was actually like really good. Like people don't like it as much. Like it gets a lot of hate. Like people are like, oh, Thor sucked until Taka Wahidi got hit. And I don't necessarily think that this movie is like, you know, obviously I think Ragnarok's definitely better than this, but I liked a lot of stuff in this movie. I liked Thor. The scene, and this is one of the scenes, there's been multiple times in my life where I've been in a movie theater and something happened in the movie where I just died laughing and nobody else in the cinema laughed at it. And this one had it when Thor's in the diner, drinks the cup of coffee and goes, I like this beverage, another, and he smashes the cup. I just died laughing at that for whatever reason in the theater. And I was kind of the only one. I also think the Thor uh, revival moment at the end when, he, when the destroyer thinks he's killed him and the hammer comes to him, he's finally worthy again. I thought that was an awesome scene in the movie. Thor's bleached eyebrows probably are what killed this movie more than anything. Like, if you just, like, look the way he looks in the future movies, I think people would like this movie a lot better. Number 18, I've got Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness. It's another movie where probably they tried to do a few too many things, and if they just focused in on the stuff that was interesting about it, it probably would have been better. Like, it's called Multiverse of Madness, but they really don't do that much with the multiverse. Like, there's, like, one quick scene where him and America Chavez are, like, popping through some different corners of the multiverse and then they end up on the one planet where Wanda ends up seeing all the cameo characters that she also kills very much a Sam Raimi movie this is one where like the director got to do their thing this was a Sam Raimi movie if ever you've seen a Sam Raimi movie so if you like Sam Raimi which I do you probably like this one which I kind of do too I have it at 18 17 Thor Love and Thunder this is one that I think the more I think about it the more I watch it the more I go back to it I'll probably drop it down the rankings because I really liked it at first like there was a lot of stuff that popped for it like uh Russell Crowe's portrayal of Zeus is hilarious it's really fun but it got a little too jokey like I think they gave Taika Waititi like I just talked about Sam Raimi getting some freedom I think they gave Ta Taika Waititi a little too much freedom in this one he got a little too silly a little too goofy a little too out there with it but overall still a pretty solid movie still a better version of Thor than what we saw in the first two Thor movies so I think 17 is a good spot for it, but I could see it kind of going down over time. Like like I said, I think Avengers Age of Ultron might get better with age, and I think this one might end up kind of dropping and getting worse. 16, Captain America, Captain America, the first Avenger. I love this movie. I thought it was awesome. I still think it's awesome. I love the portrayal of Steve Rogers. I talked about it that already, about how good Chris Evans is as the character. I thought the Red Skull was pretty good definitely feels a different tone than the future Captain America movies, but that's what you get when you have, like, Joe Johnstone, the guy, I think that's his name, who directed, like, the Rocketeer directing this. But he was kind of the perfect fit for it because it had the right kind of period piece, nostalgia, World War II, old-timey feel to it. So I like it. I have it at 16. 15, I've got Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2. I rewatched this this weekend as well. It's actually better than I remember it being. I kind of have ego now i would say top five villains in the mcu maybe that'll be a future marvel monday ranking of the villains really like him really like the whole story the whole subplot there is like a little it's maybe a little too long like the, they separate the two teams of guardians out for the kind of middle stretch of the movie that maybe goes on a little too long but i don't really know exactly how you could cut or do that but that there's one criticism of it it's maybe just a little too stretched out in the middle 14, I've got the original Iron Man, the movie that set the tone, that set the stage, that built the MCU. It's great. Robert Downey Jr. was perfect casting. It was, if that didn't work, if it wasn't just so many things that came together, it couldn't have all worked. I still remember being in the theater seeing Sam Jackson show up for the first time as Nick Fury to talk about the Avengers Initiative and being like, holy crap, that movie's really good, but what the heck are we about to get? And now we've pretty much seen it, and it's been awesome. Iron Man started it all. I've got... Next up, my numbers are off. I'm looking at my rankings now and I realize my numbers are off because I've got Iron Man at 14. I have no number 13. Something's missing from the list. Too late now. We forge ahead. Next up, I've got the Avengers, the original Avengers movie. It was awesome to finally see all the characters come together for the first time. Like I said earlier, I think over time we might end up putting Ultron ahead of this one because James Spader's villain was awesome in that one. The introduction of Scarlet Witch and Quicksilver was pretty cool. There's some issues there. It drags a little bit. It's a little slow, a little not as funny as the first one, but 
first one was funny. It had good humor. It was when Josh Whedon was still somebody we trusted to make movies. Um, just really good. Loki, great villain, all-time great villain. Once again, right there with the Ego, probably in the top five for MCU villains. But I've got Avengers at 12. 11, I've got Spider-Man Homecoming, the first Spider-Man movie in the MCU. I really like this movie. Michael Keaton as the Vulture was awesome. The twist of revealing that he's Liz Allen's father was great. Although I think that was kind of a cheat code because, you know, it's Adrian Toomes, she's Liz Allen, so it kind of didn't didn't really lay the seeds for him to be the dad. I like twist where like when you get the twist, you're like, oh, I should have seen that coming. But this one was kind of one that they kind of didn't really plant seeds for. They just kind of like, oh, this is gonna be funny. Nobody's gonna get it. But it's still in the movie theater when Peter goes to pick up Liz Allen for uh, Homecoming, I guess it was. And the vulture is the one that opens the door. That was all time gasp moment in the theater. At number 10, I have Captain America Civil War. Good movie. Basically an Avengers movie, not a Captain America movie, but got to see Spider-Man for the first time. Uh, one of the better uses of Hawkeye was in this movie. Uh, Ant-Man really was probably finding his way here and he gets to be Giant Man for the first time. So Civil War is good. The storyline, the plot of Baron Zemo probably hurts this one because it was a lot of uh, coincidental stuff have, had to happen for his plan to actually work. So he's a lot better in Winter Soldier and Falcon than he is in this movie. And him as the villain in this and his plan is kind of the only thing that kind of brings it down a little bit. Number nine, I've got Spider-Man No Way Home. Uh, this is the most recent Spider-Man where we got all the characters from the past coming together. The sort of multiversal collapse starting to happen in the MCU where we got to see Tobey Maguire and Andrew Garfield. My favorite thing about this movie is how awesome Andrew Garfield is in this because he was really good in the two Spider-Man movies he did. It really was unfortunate for him that they were just bad movies. So it was really cool to see him get to come back and get some shine. There's been calls for them to either do a TV series or a movie set in his universe to kind of continue with the Andrew Garfield uh, back as a cool Spider-Man tour. I don't know that you need to do that, but I wouldn't be opposed to it. But Spider-Man No Way Home or Fart, wait, No Way Home is at number nine. Eight, I've got the original Black Panther. I kind of already talked about this one a lot, just comparing it to Black Panther Wakanda Forever. Um, villain is awesome. Killmonger, one of the best, another one, another guy who's probably one of the better villains in all of Marvel. Um, so it comes in at number eight. Seven, I've got Spider-Man Far From Home. Now, this is one where I'm probably in a little bit different than a lot of people. I think most people would rank the Spider-Man movies in the order of release. They probably have Homecoming first, then this one second, and then No Way Home third. But I love Mysterio as a villain. I love Jake Gyllenhaal's uh, performance as Mysterio in this. I love the way they turned it into a guy who was scorned by Tony Stark and kind of integrated the same kind of technology that Tony Stark was using into Mysterio and kind of set up both why Spider-Man could potentially be the next Iron Man, but also why he shouldn't be the next Iron Man. So a lot of stuff that I really like in this movie. And I thought it was kind of cool taking Spider-Man out of New York to kind of like, you know, a European Spider-Man adventure. It's not something you see every day, so it was kind of fun. Different look at that. I've got it at number seven. Six, I've got Captain America Winter Soldier. This is probably the best pure movie in the MCU in terms of like, if you change the characters' names, made them not Captain America, if you just made it like Special Agent Steve Rogers and Special Agent uh, Romanoff and took the superhero part of it and just made it like a spy espionage movie, it still would be a really, really, really awesome movie. Um, so it gets a lot of credit for that. I rewatched it this weekend. It was very good, very entertaining. Love it a whole lot. Like I said, you know, it is probably the best pure movie in the MCU. Uh, but I've got it at six. This is all screwed up because I have no number five either. I have, This is terrible. Four, I've got Thor Ragnarok. Just hilarious movie. Just I, It's so fixed some of the issues that the Thor franchise had had. And I wish... Love and Thunder had been closer to this and less like what it was. Love the whole scene with, you know, what are you, the God of Hammers? The big finale where he just realizes he can control his powers without it and he just goes ham. Everything with Korg. Korg is hilarious. I don't know. It's a really good movie. It's at number four, maybe. I don't know. These numbers are so messed up. Three, I've got the original Guardians of the Galaxy. Same thing. This is the one that kind of really set the tone for the movies that were to come in the Marvel Universe, kind of showed how to do the balance of comedy, action, adventure, fun, romance, just had everything in it. You know, Thor Ragnarok, 
takes a lot from this. I think that's why at the end of Endgame, they tried to like pair Thor up with the Guardians and why he was kind of paired up with them in Infinity War 2. Just because they kind of had that same flair, that same flavor to Ragnarok and the Guardians movies. Um, but I think a lot of the success of the kind of second half of the MCU is due to Guardians coming out and people seeing the tone, the humor of that movie and saying, we should probably put more of this into our movies. And that was a smart thing to do in a really good movie. Really, really entertaining. Three, it could easily be two or one for me, but I've got it at three because I don't think you can just, you can't go above two and one. Two, I've got Infinity War. Awesome movie, just like the balancing act of finally bringing all the characters together, finally connecting all the plot threads that have been established over like 20 something movies before that. Just what a, the execution of that is brilliant and just the, so much fun. Thor arriving Wakanda, all time scene, all time like theater reaction moment, but you can't top number one. The one that had just people cheering like it was a sporting event in the theaters. Avengers Endgame is number one for me. I just love it. Love the heroes returning. The build that you knew. You you knew. I knew going in the movie Captain America was going to lift Mjolnir. And still when he did it, it was going nuts in the theater. One of the great things. I said this. I told Jess of this every time we've rewatched it. Of Endgame. Is the scene on your left. When Falcon returns. So much is happening, so much action was going on in the movie that it almost made you forget that Hulk had done the snap himself, that they had tried to bring everybody back. You just completely forgot that happened because then you get like a 30 minute action sequence where Thanos shows up, there's a battle between the original three and Thanos and just all kinds of crazy stuff is happening and you totally forget, oh wait, I think they just resurrected all the heroes like 40 minutes ago. And so in that Sam moment, you should have known, you should have been like, oh, he did the snap, everybody's back. But when Sam comes and it's like on your left, you're like, I completely messed this list up because I had at least two slots. I don't have a number five. I don't have a number 13. So I don't know if my numbers are just off or if I left some movies off the list, but I, you know, I'm pretty happy with what I did, the order of the movies that I did list here. If you can come up with what movies I may have forgotten, but only this is only for phase four up. This doesn't include anything that came after Black Panther Wakanda Forever. Let me know. I do think Endgame is the best movie in the whole series. I think Infinity War is great. Guardians, Thor Ragnarok, Winter Soldier. That's an easy top five for me. That's my rankings. Hopefully I didn't ramble too much. Hopefully you enjoyed this. We're coming back next week with another Marvel Monday. So at least one more week of Marvel Monday because Ant-Man and the Wasp's Quantum Mania drops on Disney Plus this Wednesday, May 17th. That's the only Marvel thing that I haven't seen yet. I missed it in its theatrical run. The negative reviews it got kind of turned me off and I was also really busy with work and other stuff at the time to so I didn't get a chance to see it, but it's coming out on Disney Plus. So I'll watch it this week. I'll recap that. I'm looking forward to that because like it, it's got like 48% on Rotten Tomatoes, which is by far the worst of any MCU movie. And I'm like, Eternals was so bad. How could this be worse? Eternals, dead last on my list. Terrible, awful movie. I'm excited to see how they made Ant-Man worse or if it is worse. I kind of, I have a feeling that people really expected Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania to be the movie that kind of launched the next kind of big story because it's got Kang and we know Kang is kind of being set up as the next big villain. So I kind of have this theory in my head, having not seen it, I've managed to mostly avoid spoilers as well, that maybe it just didn't go as big in scale and in setup of what's to come in the MCU as what people thought because that's kind of what happened with like Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness for me. I thought it was really going to show us what the whole multiversal story that we're getting into with Marvel's, you know, phase four, phase five, phase six, which is called the multiverse saga. I thought we were going to get to see what that was going to be all about in Dr. Strange. And like I said, we only got like a quick, like blast through the multiverse and barely really even got to see anything. So maybe that's what happened with Ant-Man quantum and Wasp quantum mania. I don't know. We'll find out next week because I'm going to watch it. I'm going to come back to a Marvel Monday, sharing my thoughts about it. And then we'll probably talk about some other Marvel stuff too. Stick around for that. Thanks for watching as always. And I'll see you at the the movies and also at Taco Bell. I might get some Taco Bell and sneak it into the movie theaters. Maybe I'll get Taco Bell and I'll eat it while I watch Ant-Man and Wasp Quantumania. I don't know. Anything could happen.